It's Lorene McGinnis Schultz of Olive Tree Genealogy back with video three of my Shutterfly tutorial on how to make a memory photo book for one of your ancestors or more than one. We left off um, on video two where we had added all our pictures. So the next step in creating your photo book is, for me anyway, this is the way I do it, I create my text and my text boxes. So the first thing that I like to do is go in and make sure that I've got my pictures where I want them. You know, just a quick double check. And, um, you know, I might come to this one, for example, and say, oh, you know what, I don't want this one here. I want it over here on page two. So I'm going to exit, which removes it from the page, removes it from the page, but keeps it in the picture strip. So it will show up and there it is in the picture strip. Now, if I'm only going to use these two cemetery photos here, I don't want this third empty space. So I'm going to go into where I have a choice of two pictures and I think I'll take this one. And that will automatically rearrange those cemetery photos and I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to go back to this page, which is where I want to include this picture. I want it, whoops, and I released it too soon, so I'm not sure where it will go. Perfect. And the only thing is it's too big. There are problems with it. So I would have to go in to customize and resize it, which I will do right now. First, I'll move it so that I can grab the corner. I just resize it a bit. Having a little trouble with my trackpad today. And I'll move this one so that I can grab the corner, resize it a little bit. I don't like trying to line them up perfectly, even though when you do this, you'll see the blue line comes across here horizontally, which shows you where the line is from the other picture. So you you can work at that and get them so they line up perfectly. I, I don't have the patience for that, and I'm not very good at it. So I tend to make mine totally different sizes and kind of stagger them on the page. And also, I want to leave room for some text because I have to say who these people are. Just because I know doesn't mean anyone else in my family knows. And so since we're in here in the um, continue section of Shutterfly. Let's add a text box to this page because this is what I want. Definitely, I want these two pictures together. We just go here to add text box. It pops up here. We just drag it to move it. You can resize it. I already know I don't want it over that far. I'll resize it and bring it down. And now to type in it, you double click. Double clicking allows you to edit, and there you go. Up here you can choose your font that you want. They have dozens of fonts. You pick the one you like. You have choices here in the drop down list. In this case you don't. It's only regular but often you have italic or bold. And you can choose a font size and a color. And I just stick with this one and I would type my text. Whatever I want. I'm not going to for you with doing all that right now. Click done. And normally, I mean, I think it's kind of obvious, but I'll say it anyway. Normally what one would probably do is give the date wh when the picture was taken, if you know, uh, where it was taken and who the people are in the picture and what your relationship to that person or people is. Is, uh, not very good grammar, but you know what I mean. Uh, so then we go into continue so that we can go back to the regular editing page. And now you can go through and you can say, <clears throat> I'm going to add text, but do I like the text boxes? You know, are they big enough? If they are, great. You simply double click and you type whatever you want. You know, the name of the person, date picture was taken, and the same on this one. And if you don't like where the text boxes are, you can see that these are off-centered to the pictures, and I don't like that. And you might want a bigger text box. 
or even a smaller one. Again, you just go into Customize. Customize allows you to resize and move both the picture boxes and the text box. And that popped up because of my, my laptop that I'm using. I ran my um, cursor over it. And that's all you do you, to add your text. You go through, add all your text. Notice too down here, you have your pictures down here in the picture tray, but you also have your pages and you can flip back and forth. That allows you to more quickly go to a page you want to work on. And this is where, of course, you're going to create your title, whatever that might be. Choose your size. You, oh, you also have an orientation you can choose. You want it on the left, you want it on the right. You can see it moving over here as I choose. Do you want it on the right, middle? I want the middle. McGinnis Memories. If I want to put my name as author, which I do, I need it, and I want it in a different font size, I want it smaller, then I have to use a separate text box. You can't change font sizes within one text box. On this particular one, I probably would give it a more of a title. You know, McGinnis Memories, the story of whatever. And I would create my title so that it's a longer title. If you're doing a hardcover book, you can also put a text down the, uh, down the spine so you can add your title down there. I could have put a picture here. Here's my choices for the cover types. I can have a picture. I can have picture and words. I just want you to see right now, though, how to do text. And then I'm going into the next page. <clears throat> Excuse me. I left this page blank, number one, because I actually want it to be what they call a title page, and I want it to probably be mostly text or perhaps a small picture with quite a bit of text. So I can either add a text box or I can choose one of the layouts here. That's going to give me this layout, and perhaps I'll put a small picture and then I'll um, add my text in there. And this was where I kind of introduced the book. You know, what is this book about? And that's really it, unless you choose to add embellishments. So if you wanted to add embellishments, let's get to a page. Um, this one. <clears throat> Excuse me. You click on the embellishment tags over here on the left and you pick something that you like. You know, do you like some of the text? Oh, what about this? And let's just drag it over and see what happens. Now it's taken me right into continue so that I can resize this if I choose to. I can make it bigger, I can edit the text, I can do whatever I want. I like that, I'm happy with it. What about on this one? What if we pick another embellishment? These are picture frames, they're fun to work with. You just pick one it will go on the page and then you insert your picture inside it. And you may have to tweak it a bit, resize things, but they're quite nice. If you're not sure what these long worded things say, you just run your mouse over and it should pop up. And you can decide if you like any of these. Um, you can also add Let's just try this. It probably won't look good with these colors, but that bar should go all the way across. Yes, it did. Now I would have to, I'm in um, the customized section already, and I would have to play with this a bit because the pictures are blocked by that bar, and the text that I wrote or am going to write is also blocked. And on this one, if I were to put that horizontal fancy bar in there, I would definitely somehow line these pictures up. I'd probably ask my husband with his eagle eyes to come and make sure I've lined them up correctly, which I can see I haven't. Um, but again, this is where you're playing with the book. You're making sure you like the colors. If you don't, you're changing the backgrounds. 
you're making sure that you've added embellishments that you want to add. You're making sure that everything is just as you like it. And um, once you've decided, you know, I think I really like it, but boy, I kind of wish that page three came actually here. Darn, not to worry. Click on continue to get back to the regular editing spot and click on arrange. When you're in the arrange section, it allows you to very quickly and easily reorganize your pages. Um, so if I wanted page three, whoops, to go, you see the orange bar moving, I'm going to say, well, I want it right there. After that assessment report, but before the cemetery ones. And you know what? I want my cemetery ones to go here. And don't worry if your mouse or your cursor slips out of your hand and it goes someplace you didn't want it. You, you just keep moving them around until they're the way you want them. And, you know, I can see by looking at these two pages together, I do not like those colors together. So if this were a real book that I was creating to publish and not just a demo book to explain how to use Shutterfly, I would definitely be going in and changing these colors and doing a lot of cleanup and putting in some fancy borders, etc. But again, I just wanted to show you the basic steps of how to create this book. Then you think you've finished. Don't forget to keep clicking save once in a while. I have had some times where my computer crashed and I lost what I had done. So now I keep a little mental note that every couple of minutes or even every time I make a change, I click save. And that's up here. Now you can go in if you want. You can actually preview the book. It kind of goes through and you can start back at the beginning on the front cover. And you can just tell it to play through like a slideshow. Oops, but I have to start it. There. And it will just flip through and that kind of gives you the, the feeling of what the book looks like. Do I like how, you know, how the pages are? Do, do I like the colors together? Do I want more embellishments? Then you're done. And if you're totally done your book and you're happy with the size, the, um, the, the layout, the theme, everything, and you've added all your pictures that you want, you would click order and order it. You can also add individual pages. Once you reach the end of your 20 pages, which is the standard book size, you just click on add page and another page will pop up for you to work on. And that is how you add your text and finish up your memory book. I'm going to make one more video and which I'm, where I'm going to show you a completed book that I actually published and had sent to me. And that's all for now.